What if I told you, the father of modern genetics, Gregor Mendel, may not have been the gentle monk we read about in textbooks? Behind the famous pea plant experiments, there are whispers of something far stranger. Experiments not just with plants, but with human life, an obsession with creating a new species, part human, part plant, a so-called immortal hybrid. This is the dark hidden story of Mendel, the mad botanist. Welcome back to Hidden Science where we uncover the stories that history tried to bury. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, because you don't want to miss the strange experiments, forbidden discoveries, and bizarre scientists we reveal every week. Tonight's story takes us back to the mid-1800s. The world is changing. Darwin has just published on the origin of species. Across Europe, science and religion are locked in a bitter debate. And in a quiet monastery in Brno, a monk named Gregor Mendel is quietly tending his pea plants. But Mendel wasn't just interested in how traits pass from one pea plant to another. Some accounts suggest he had bigger stranger dreams, dreams that crossed the line from science into something far darker. In school, we learned the neat version of Mendel's story, the kind monk, carefully cross-pollinating pea plants, counting wrinkled versus smooth seeds, discovering the laws of inheritance. He is remembered as the father of genetics. But here's the thing, Mendel's published papers barely made a ripple during his lifetime. Few people cared. His monastery colleagues found him obsessive. He scribbled notes, repeated his experiments endlessly, and complained about results that didn't match the rules. And then there are the gaps. Missing notes. Lost manuscripts. Strange rumors from students who worked with him. Was Mendel hiding something? Chapter 2. The obsession with hybrids Gregor Mendel's pea experiments are the famous story. But hidden beneath that neat tale was something stranger. Mendel had a fascination, almost an obsession with hybrids. He didn't just cross peas. He raised bees and tried to engineer new strains. He bred mice. Curious about how traits carried over. He even hinted that hybridization was a universal key, not just for plants but across all life. Think about the world he lived in. Europe in the 1800s was obsessed with breeding, farmers breeding stronger livestock, horticulturists creating exotic plant hybrids, even rumors of attempts to mix animals across species. If dogs and wolves could be bred, if donkeys and horses could produce mules, then why not something even stranger? Some of Mendel's private notes, only fragments survive, suggest he wondered whether humans could be part of this same pattern. What if the laws of inheritance applied not just to peas, but to human destiny? Could humanity be improved the way farmers improved crops? To Mendel, hybridization was not just science, it was a philosophy. The blending of essences. And he wasn't alone. Philosophers of his time speculated that ancient myths, like satyrs, dryads and plant spirits were not just metaphors, but half-remembered truths. Was Mendel trying to resurrect that forgotten knowledge under the guise of science? Chapter 3. The Dark Experiments Imagine the monastery greenhouse at night, glass fogged, candlelight flickering. Mendel bends over a microscope, placing a drop of human blood beside plant pollen, observing whether their structures align. Historians can't agree on how far he went. Some say he simply theorized. Others believe he actually attempted grafts pressing human skin into the tissue of plants, or injecting plant sap into small incisions. To us, it sounds like horror. But in Mendel's time, grafting was routine. Gardeners inserted one plant into another to make it grow stronger. Why not try it with human material? If plants could share nutrients across a graft, could a human cell learn to absorb energy from sunlight? And here's the chilling part. Mendel wasn't alone in this kind of thinking. Decades later, Soviet scientists would attempt human ape crosses. In the early 20th century, surgeons transplanted animal glands into humans in bizarre experiments to restore youth. Mendel may have simply been the first to imagine something even wilder. Humans who photosynthesize humans who could live without hunger, disease or death. But to achieve that, he had to test. And that testing, if true, was hidden in the shadows. Here's where the whispers get disturbing. Some accounts claim Mendel went beyond peas and bees. That he attempted crude experiments merging plant material with human samples. Imagine the monastery greenhouse at night. Glass fogged, candlelight flickering. Mendel bends over a microscope placing a drop of human blood beside plant pollen, observing whether their structures align. Historians can't agree on how far he went. Some say he simply theorized. Others believe he actually attempted grafts, pressing human skin into the tissue of plants, or injecting plant sap into small incisions. To us it sounds like horror, but in Mendel's time, grafting was routine. Gardeners inserted one plant into another to make it grow stronger. Why not try it with human material? If plants could share nutrients across a graft, could a human cell learn to absorb energy from sunlight? And here's the chilling part. Mendel wasn't alone in this kind of thinking. Decades later, Soviet scientists would attempt human ape crosses. In the early 20th century, surgeons transplanted animal glands into humans in bizarre experiments to restore youth. Mendel may have simply been the first to imagine something even wilder. Humans who photosynthesized. Humans who could live without hunger, disease, or death. But to achieve that, 
he had to test and that testing if true was hidden in the shadows. Chapter 4. The Lost Manuscripts Here's where the mystery deepens. After Mendel's death in 1884, his personal papers were destroyed. The Abbey's official explanation was casual. His notes were of no importance. But ask yourself, why burn the records of one of science's greatest pioneers? Historians believe those papers contained more than P counts. Colleagues recalled that Mendel filled journals with sketches, strange diagrams, even doodles of plant human figures. There were mentions of immortality, of hybrid beings, of God's second Eden. The destruction of the papers seems deliberate. Perhaps the church wanted to erase any trace of a monk dabbling in heresy. Perhaps his fellow scientists feared the scandal. Or perhaps the experiments themselves, if revealed, would shock the world. But not everything was lost. In scattered letters we find references. A student writing about Mendel's obsession with merging essences. A visitor to the abbey noting that Mendel spoke of plants as the vessels of God's breath. A physician colleague admitting that he sent Mendel biological samples for strange purposes. It's fragments. But when you stitch them together, a picture emerges. Mendel wasn't just counting peas. He was chasing something radical, maybe even dangerous. Chapter 5 science or myth. Now, let's pause. Were these experiments real, or are we falling into myth? Skeptics argue that Mendel was a careful man, unlikely to risk such bizarre trials. They point out that no hard evidence survives, only whispers and rumors. But consider this. History is full of scientists whose reputations were sanitized. Isaac Newton spent more time on alchemy than physics, yet we call him the father of modern science. Darwin hid his ideas for 20 years out of fear and countless scientists destroyed or suppressed their own radical theories, knowing society wasn't ready. So ask yourself, if Mendel had really tried to cross human and plant life, would anyone in 19th century Europe have dared preserve those notes, or would they have burned them immediately to protect his name? The line between science and myth blurs here. On one hand, we have the clean image of the monk with his peas. On the other, a hidden figure working in the shadows, daring to imagine a new form of life. Which version is true? Maybe both. Chapter 6 The Legacy of the Mad Botanist Whether the rumors are fact or fiction, Mendel's story casts a long shadow. His work on genetics laid the foundation for modern science, the same science that gave us gene editing, CRISPR, and synthetic biology. Today, scientists can insert plant genes into humans in the lab. We already grow human tissue inside plant structures for medicine. In Japan, researchers are experimenting with crops that can carry human antibodies. What Mendel may have dreamed of in whispers is now edging into reality. So perhaps Mendel's madness wasn't madness at all, just vision too far ahead of its time. But that vision comes with a price. The ethical questions he raised still haunt us. Should we merge human life with other species? Is the pursuit of immortality worth the cost of identity? At what point does science cross into playing God? The mad botanist might be more than a legend. He might be a warning reminding us that curiosity, once unleashed, doesn't stop. It grows like a vine, reaching, twisting and searching for light. So, was Gregor Mendel the gentle monk we celebrate, or was he also the mad botanist secretly chasing the dream of immortal plant humans? The answer may never be fully known. But one thing is certain. The story of genetics is not as simple as wrinkled peas and green pods. It is a story of obsession, secrecy, and experiments that push the boundaries of what it means to be human. What do you think? Did Mendel really attempt these hybrid experiments, or are the missing papers just fueling a myth? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be reading and replying to as many as I can. If you enjoyed uncovering this hidden side of history, smash that like button. It helps more curious minds find our channel. Subscribe for more strange and forbidden science stories every week. And if you're brave enough, check out our next video, The Scientist Who Tried to Talk to the Dead Using Electricity, because here on Hidden Science, the truth is always stranger than fiction.